Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about uh, the secret layers and why certain people don't like them very much. I love them. I think uh, secret layers are what should have been done from the very beginning of time is you have a secondary market and I'll talk about booster boxes that is kind of out of control. And why does why can't we reprint booster boxes, right? Like why can't we reprint strong we have mystery boosters, which is kind of just reprinting all of them. But I'm saying like, hey, I would be interested in buying Innistrad. Let's make it 80 bucks. And for a booster box of Innistrad, why can't we do that? Like who said we cannot? Nothing in Innistrad is actually on the reserve list. So why can't we reprint Innistrad booster boxes? Um, and I think that's the direction that Wizard of Coast should go to. Because if they really wanted to make the cheddar... They would sell booster boxes direct to customers or via Amazon Prime, which they're already selling at prices that no one can match. So $200 on Amazon Prime, Amazon's going to take 20% of that off the top, plus their storage and shipping. You're talking about maybe if you're lucky, you're, making, you're getting $150 on a $200 sale from Amazon. Because Amazon's going to take all that for money from you. Uh, how do I know that? Because I sell on Amazon. Now, theoretically, the Wizard of Coast, who does sell direct via Amazon, they just need to do a tiny bit better with their booster box prices. Instead of like $95, why don't they make it $75? At $75, no store, no distributor can match that price because the price is too low and wizard of coast would be making most of the profit they would be cutting out the middleman so when you talk about middleman what does a distributor actually add to the i mean what's the point like if the local game stores are all go, going belly under and the distributor's job theoretically isn't to sell to the final person but to sell to the local game store then why do we even need a distributor at this point when we are not relying on the local game stores? And wouldn't it be better for the players to just buy direct from Amazon or Wizard of Coast themselves on their Hasbro website? Yeah, that's why Secret Lairs upset so many people. It doesn't upset me. I saw this coming. I saw this coming in Throne of the Eldrin when the Walmart dude, even before Throne of the Eldrin, I, as you may remember, I was buying more of the Spark Packs and quite happy. Then I get a call, or not a call, I get um, a visit from the Walmart dude who gives me the list of things, and I'm like, holy blank, what is this product, and why is it so expensive? I circled it, and I asked him, is this like um, a bundle or something that's like on sale, or a mystery bundle? And he's like, no, no, this is a one single booster pack. Later, I found out that was the uh, collector's edition, <laughs> which is <laughs> insane when I still think about it. And I said, oh, I see. Oh, by the way, how do you like your Throne of the Alderaan? How do you like cards that you can never play in any format? How do you like your uh, Once Upon a Time and Oko? You love them? I love them. I'm so glad I didn't buy that set. I'm so I'm super glad I didn't buy Pharaohs Beyond Death. But at this point, I'm not buying Ikoria. I think Ikoria is going to suck. I mean, the pre-release is at your home now. So, like, you're even taking... So, the local game store is one advantage, right? is that you can play with strangers at a place and have a you know a larger gathering of more than 50 people. The local game store I went to, uh, DNA Comics, when I first got here, uh, RTR and Gatecrash, it was 120 plus people registered and probably 140, 150 people that night. And now that's not even that experience, right? You talk about pre-release experience, now you're just going to experience it at your home. So... Fantastic. There's no need for a local game store anymore. And I think there's no need for a developer anymore. Not a developer. There's no need for a... That's what I'm thinking right now in my head. You know, I pay my developers a lot of money. I'm thinking, do I really need one? Uh, slip of uh, the consciousness, I guess. But, um, I mean, you have to question it, right? 
if your local game store is no longer able because of the current virus and situation to buy, provide a gaming place for the Magic players, then what advantage does a local game store have over someone's home? The answer is no advantage, right? If the pre-release is at your home now, okay, I don't see why I can't just buy direct from Wizard of the Coast. Why do I need to go to a local game store to pick it up? I mean, it's such an inconvenience, right? So if the local game store is no longer doing magic, and many local game stores have quit magic altogether, including my own local game store, and DNA Comics doesn't have it anymore, uh, and then every other store I know of bankrupt that does magic. And I'll tell you the story of um, my uh, law school store and a bankrupt, how it bankrupt five times, and the guy just kept going. Shoot, five different company changes. And when you love something, I think you um, don't... When you love something, it's hard to see that it's financially ruining you until ruining you until you actually are financially ruined. Because you always think there's a chance. So the ultimate secret layer product, there's a lot of people who think, don't buy it. But these same people are going to buy it. Because why would... It's 160... Okay, let's say it's 200 bucks. You get five fetch lands. Okay, for $200, you can also buy a Pharaoh's Beyond Death Collectors, which people are still buying. In droves, apparently. Why would you buy that over this? Like, what could you possibly pull that's better than a Misty Rainforest? Or a Scalding Tarn? Or even a Vernon Catacombs? What could you possibly pull? Not even value-wise, that's more useful. And people will ask, why are they five singles? Why don't they have a playset of this and a playset of that? And... The answer is very simple. This is EDH, guys. They don't give a blank about modern. Modern's going away. Like, the writing is on the wall. Pioneer is replacing modern. It, it's really funny, right? The modern players sold out of modern cards to buy Pioneer or to rebuild the Pioneer cards, uh, decks. And now there's nowhere to play Pioneer because of the virus. <laughs> so now they're selling the Pioneer cards. That's exactly what's happening. Every single day, my store gets two to four people selling their Pioneer decks. And it's really crazy because I don't think there was ever a Pioneer event. Magic Fest are getting canceled. Um, and now, like, I'm really considering if now is a good time. So Dual Lands, I will buy now. Reserve List, I will buy now. Um, older stuff, I will buy now because I want to accumulate as much as possible. And one thing I learned from buying Falia is it's, it's never too early to buy if you really believe in that market. Dual lands, I believe in. Uh, it's very simple why I believe in them. Uh, I've accumulated 400, 500 now. I've accumulated uh, 200 unlimited. Nope. 180 unlimited. Dual, almost 200. Uh, not quite. Because there was another collection that um, emailed me over Sunday. And he had 40 dual lands too. And then I think a time twister and... What else? A bizarre Baghdad, I remember. But the price he wanted was too high, so I just said, you know, I'll wait. But I would not speculate on modern. I would not speculate on Pharaohs Beyond Death. Where are you going to? Where? How are you going to play those cards? Like, I, I'm serious. Like, where would you go and play standard or modern or pioneer now? Given that there's entire restaurants and bars being shut down, and gatherings over fifty are not recommended. Fifty people are not recommended. And you probably should not be at your local game store, which is already kind of infestation and quite dirty compared to other places. So, in my opinion, people will play EDH at home. And that's it. EDH is a casual home base format. That's why the uh, Commander, what, I don't know what that, I didn't ever watch it. Commander's something, they're like the most popular YouTube channel for Magic the Gathering. And all they do is play Magic. They don't play at a local game store. They play at their homes. And it's like four people. What is it called? Commander? Command? Pod, it's with the Asian dude and the white dude. And they have power to spike cards because you look at Reap. A lot of you say, oh, EDH is not real for... Come on, are you kidding me? Like, some of the cards are only playable in EDH and they're vastly superior. 
But I'm not buying Pioneer. I'm not buying Ferris Beyond Death. I feel like, okay, you bought a collector's case. Now what are you going to do with it? You can't resell it for more money. You just have to like hold it and then play with yourself. Because like, who else is going to play Standard right now? Where would you go? You telling me that your friends all play Standard? No, no one wants to play Standard. Because my play group, they only play ED8s and we only draft. That's why I think the whole reprinting the Innistrad would be really great for us. For 80 bucks. I Why not? Like they do on Magic Online sometimes. They reprint, you know, they call it like Eternal or something. Masters or something. Or Tempest Remastered. Yeah, they do that on DVDs. They take old classics and they somehow put them on Blu-ray and off you go. And then they can make some more money. So Magic the Gathering is going to reprint um, whatever it can reprint. Including, I believe, eventually boxes. How awesome would it be to draft original Ravnica for 80 bucks? Why not? Who would not want to do that? Um, now, I am heavily invested in Pioneer, not as a result for investing in Pioneer, but just as a result of buying <laughs> complete collections, right? And just accumulating so much of this uh, stuff. Like, I'll be honest, where are you going to play Magic? And the next, like, where are you going to play Standard, Pioneer, or Modern? But I can tell you where you play EDAs. Most Modern players have, what, one or two Modern decks? You know, most EDAs players have 10 decks. All my playgroup, I mean, we have a whole bunch of decks. Now, we all only play Mono Blue for the most part. But um, it's really flexible. I mean, I... When I was selling my collection, I did sell my collection, by the way, in case you wanted to know. I sold my modern. I, I told you exactly what I sold. I sold standard, modern, um, Pioneer I held on to because I obviously didn't know a virus was going to hit us. I thought Pioneer would be the next format. And I kept the EDH. Everything else I let go. Because I didn't have any interest in like War of the Spark or... Like, it didn't make sense to me that, like, and of course, I didn't know a virus would hit, but this makes me mo even more certain that, hey, who the blank is buying beyond Pharaoh's Beyond Death, and where the blank would you play it? Maybe 1% of cards are EDH playable, but the rest of it is just standard garbage. If no one's playing standard, then who's buying this crap? But Fetchlands, EDH. That's why there's one of each. Hi, guys.